Canoop really started back in late 2005, right? And uh, yeah, I think Yahoo took a sort of a, a, a designed leap of faith to get it into Apache and, and really drive an open source ecosystem around it. Fast forward to today, and it's you know the use cases are really drive, driven around this new data paradigm. A lot of these new uh, sources of data, whether it's Internet of Things, sensors, machines, clickstream, or what have you. Um, and people want to be able to blend that with some of their existing sources in ways that sort of unlock new, uh, you know, new opportunity, whether it's uh, new, you know, revenue uh, streams or what have you. And so, you know, if we look across a couple of the different industries, you know, like in the retail, it's, it's no longer about just sort of mass branding, right? It's very much down to personalized experience and, uh, you know, informed by like a really 360 degree view of the consumer or the customer. Um, you know, in healthcare, it's, it's, it's around the patient, right? Optimizing the patient healthcare outcomes at scale um, with, uh, you know, uh, personalized diagnostics or even designer medicine in some cases, right? Um, right. And a lot, of the, a lot of the new forms of data <laughs> flow into there. Or even in manufacturing, it's, you know, you have a sort of the break then fix mentality, right? Um, and uh, it's evolving to really uh, maintain it before uh, issues occur. So it's a shift from sort of the reactive world to more of a proactive, real-time, uh, you know, value chain, if you will, whether it's a customer, or a product, a patient, or, or a piece of equipment, or what have you. Right. So it's, <clears throat> it seems like one of the common threads uh, across these industries is having a, a central 360 view of your customers, your products, your suppliers, yep. and enriching that with new insights and, and uh, new um, uh, predictive analytics to help uh, in, that, in that growth. Exactly. Right? So, so, you know, and I think, you know, in, in the scheme of things, Hadoop wound up providing sort of a platform where these new sets of data could be brought together, aggregated, mm -hmm. joined with some of the existing sources to unlock some of these use cases. And that's what we're seeing really across industry. Right. So Sanjay, I mean, speaking of, of data and this new type of growth, what are some of the new types of data that you're seeing fuel this growth in, in these particular use cases? Um, so in addition to all the use cases uh, that Sean mentioned, I think one of the other things we're seeing is people are offloading some of the, some of the data warehousing onto, onto Hadoop. So, in addition to all the structured data that you see in, uh, you know, in in say a data warehouse-like environment, you're seeing what we call interaction data. So, this may be data that's coming from say log files. Mm -hmm. This may be data that's getting generated by say Twitter. If you want to do things like brand management, then you need to take data from Twitter, which is I would say somewhat unstructured. And then, if you want to do things like uh, predictive maintenance on your machines, then this is log data, which tends to be semi-structured. So, we're seeing a mix of very structured data to semi-structured data to unstructured data. So we're seeing the whole spectrum, and that's what's different in this new world. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it applies pressures to your point on the uh, uh, data warehouse optimization uh, side of things. It puts pressure really on more of the traditional systems that are trying to power the operations and deliver mm -hmm. analytics in the way they do, and, and some of the workloads that might arguably not be best suited for those systems can kind of be normalized, mm -hmm. if you will, with the platform. Right. And that's we're seeing that a fair amount as well. 